Welcome everybody to the 2022 uh, Western Bowl featuring uh, Bell River, the Windsor area champion versus Frontenac, the Kingston area champion. And I'm here in the booth with U of T head coach Greg Marshall. Thanks for coming today, Greg. Thanks, Dave. Looking forward to this game. This is a good matchup. Yeah, I mean, this year, two, de two of the definitely the best, I'd say, top ten teams in Ontario, maybe even the top five or six. Uh, they both had impressive records. Uh, I think both of them are actually undefeated. They are. Both of them have not lost the game and uh, been involved in a couple of nail biters, but for the most uh, have had fairly comfortable uh, wins in most of their games. Yeah, so we got big shoes to fill. I mean, shout out to Jack Moore and Dwayne Cameron who did all six games yesterday. Uh, me and Greg are uh, rookies to the booth here, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do our best. Uh, so, Greg, I understand you just got back from Oregon. Yeah, I was down there for the American Thanksgiving, visiting my family. Uh, being the oldest of seven brothers and sisters, uh, it's never a small gathering at Thanksgiving when everybody yep. gets together. So, but it was a lot of fun and. Uh, then took in the Oregon Oregon State game on the weekend. Yeah, I heard you're a big Ducks fan. Uh, no, we, <laughs> no, we hate the Ducks. So it was a it was a great win by the Beavers, and yeah, uh, we for had the, a lot of fun. For those of you that don't know, Greg played at Oregon State, and I was I, I was waiting to just say that to him. <laughs> Thank you. So here we go. Kingston is going to be kicking off. Looks like they took the win to start the game, which. Uh, could be a big factor in the ball yep. game today. Here we go, starting off the Western Bowl. Short kick near the sideline, fielded around the 20-yard line. Number 14 from Wins uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Bell River returns the ball to the 40-yard line. Tackled by number 42 for uh, Frontenac, Jace Bozhart. Pretty good return to start the game. You know, when you're running against the wind, it's uh, one of the fears is getting buried early to start the game. So nice job by Bell River on the return. Yeah, so we're going to see the Bell River offense to start the game here. They're, quarterback, they're led by quarterback Nick Domofsky, who's certainly ranked as one of the, the top top quarterbacks in the province. A lot of schools uh, looking at him. I assume, Greg, you might be one of them. Yeah, we might have had a conversation <laughs> or two with Nick. Yeah, he's a very good player. Yeah, there's going to be a little poker uh, playing here in the booth. Greg, Greg doesn't want to give away too many secrets to me. Yeah. Hand off up the middle or left-hand side. About a seven- or eight-yard gain. By number two, Dayton Canto brings up about second and three, second and two. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, on a day like today, who controls the line of scrimmage. In any game, is a big factor. But with the wind uh, playing a role today, the line of scrimmage is going to be a big factor. Yeah, and both teams have uh, really good passing offenses, and you know how the yeah. wind is going to dictate their ability to uh, throw today will be will be an interesting facet of the yes, game. Yes, it will. So second and two, Tomofsky in the shotgun. Okay, a little empty set, jet sweep. Oh, Ooh. and he's hit hard by number 30, 59. 59, that is Brian Cowton, who is a very good linebacker. I saw him play a few weeks ago in Kingston. Big hitter, made a lot of plays then. I'm sure we're going to be calling his name a lot today. Uh, that was a big stop right there. Frontenac will get the ball in relatively good field position, I would imagine, with them punting into the wind. So, Yeah, and I mean, they had a second and, second and two. They lost about two yards on that. <laughs> so we got, let's see who's punting for Bell River, trying to see the number there. And this will be interesting to see what kind of leg he has, especially w in, against the wind. The returners are still pretty deep. Kind of a line drive, low kick, bounces around 35. Fielded at the 34-yard line. Gets about a five-yard return before he's tackled at the 39-yard 39, 39 line. Looked like the punter was Mateo Triffin. Yeah. He does a little bit of everything for Yeah, him. he's he's another guy that you probably talk to, right? And uh, he... We, he might have, we might have his phone number as well. Yeah, he, and he does... He, <laughs> word has it he does a little more than punting, too. Yeah, so, he does. Yeah. He does. He's going to be getting a lot of interest from a lot of schools and... Uh, 
Huge kid, plays on both. I don't think he's even going to come off the field for a single down. Probably not. So here we go. We got first and ten for Frontenac at the 39-yard line. Quarterback's in the gun, single back in the backfield, hand up up the middle. And he's quickly wrapped up after about a two-yard gain by number 87, Mateo Trifon. For those of you at home listening, if you're, if you're having one of those drinking games every time you hear a certain name, uh, <laughs> if you have Mateo Trifon, you're going uh, to be well-oiled by the end of the game. You're going to have a good supply. Yeah. So I actually got about four or five yards on that. Second and six, quarterback's in the gun again, single back in the backfield, rolling right. Oh, he's under pressure. They got him. And he's sacked by number 70, Zach Delisle. So that's going to bring up third and ten. They, they were trying to run a little bit there, but uh, they did a good job pulling him up so he couldn't get outside, and the backside rush got to him. Okay, so that brings up about a third and ten after the loss. Front next, line up in point formation. Looks like they have, no, I thought they were going to have a guy uh, onside, but that's not happening. They got the left-footed kicker. And it almost was blocked. Fielded at the 38-yard line by number 14. Nice coverage. Liam Havinga quickly tackled after a short gain. We got a flag in the backfield, though. Back, uh, we actually have two flags on the field. Still waiting to see what the call is or calls are. Multiple flags. The almost blocking the kick turns into contact and a roughing the kicker, it looks like. He signaled roughing the kicker, but he pointed at the kicking team. <laughs> that might be tough to do. That would be, I mean, there could be a little. Uh, Unless you kick yourself in the <laughs> shin or something. <laughs> but that is what the ref signaled. Okay, I think now they got it right. Okay. That would have been the first time in uh, football history that a roughing the kicker call would have gone against the kicking team. So so it will bring up a first down, though, for Frontenac. That penalty extends the drive. That's always a real kick in the head when that happens. Yeah, hey, Coach? Yeah, that doesn't make your defensive coordinator too happy. Either. No, I imagine when that kid comes to the sideline after roughing the kicker, he should probably just go to the other sideline. <laughs> So here we go, first and 10 for Frontenac on their own 49-yard line. Shotgun hand up, handoff up the middle to number 32. Blake Buchanan, he gets his wrapped up after a very short game. Interesting that Frontenac's act coming out and uh, trying to establish the run early. And, you know, I know they're known a little bit more for their passing game, but uh, interesting to start the game here. Yep. So that brings up, uh, again, about a second and seven. Frontenac, the uniforms look exactly like the Ottawa GGs. Yes, they do. Shot, quarterback in the shotgun, short pass. Oh, it's deflected. Oh, oh. oh. the Def old tip drill almost worked. Deflected by one receiver, went to another one, and he couldn't get his hands on it. So we're going to have a third and third and seven. So, Greg, I, I heard the Oregon-Oregon State game was, was quite the game. It was awesome. Uh... Oregon got ahead 31 to 10, and Oregon State came back and won 38-34. <laughs> so it was uh, quite an exciting game, and particularly if you were rooting for the Oregon State Beavers, like I was. That that must have been amazing. See that comeback. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so here we go. Front knack and punt formation. Oh, almost blocked. Oh, there's a, there should be a no yard. Fielded at the 27. Gets about a nine-yard game before he's tackled by three Ottawa players, including number 82, Caleb North. It's interesting here. Uh, Frontenac's punter is only lined up at about 10, 11 yards, and so when he steps up, he's kicking at about eight yards. And they're getting a lot of pressure on those kicks. Yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, I know when I ever would see that at the high school level. I would always go for the block if they're if they're lined up at 10 or 11 yards. It's like if they're not at 14 or 15, they're a fair game. It should be easy to get. Okay, so now we have uh, Bell River with their second possession here. 
Quarterbacks in the shotgun, split backs beside him. Fake handoff, Demosky rolls right, and he's met by about four or five front act defenders, but he manages to get forward for about three yards. Looked like that was just a pure quarterback sweep. There wasn't really any receivers running routes as he rolled that way, so just a straight run play. Yeah, and Demosky's a big kid, um, but, you know, I think, you know, the, the way they're going to win this game is with his arm, not necessarily, uh, not necessarily running the ball. I think we got a little bit of a feeling out process here by both offenses, trying to figure out exactly what they're going to be facing defensively. Yeah, and I know these, you know, these teams both had excellent seasons, um, and so it's, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens where the rest of the game here. We got second and seven, second and eight. We got an I formation. You don't see that much. No. Uh oh. Quick hitter to the tight end. To the big fella. Breaks a tackle. And he's still going. So that was a quick hitter to Mateo Trifon. That was basically the stereotypical high school passing play, yeah. where yeah. you line up in the eye, you just hit, you hit the tight end on the quick hitter. He goes up the middle, and he probably got about 30, 35 yards there at least. They caught him in a blitz too. They brought two linebackers up through the a gaps and uh, quick throw by the quarterback and uh, one on one with your big receiver, and he breaks a tackle and it turns into a big play for him. Yeah, they're going to have to find an answer for uh, covering that uh, that guy because because Mateo, I think he's about six foot five. Yeah, I'm not sure one guy's going to be enough. Uh, so now we got first and ten on about the 38 yard line. I formation again, handoff to number two, burst through the line. He's going down the sideline and he's knocked out of bounds at the 13 yard line. That's a good run by Dayton Canto. It's another first down for Bell River. Nice job by the right side of the offensive line here. Open a nice hole. Good lead block by the fullback. And he got into the secondary and made some nice cut to get to the outside. Yeah, there were some decent blocks on the outside there too. Sometimes the receivers, I mean, they got to you know, make sure they don't hit the defenders in the back. And sometimes the best thing to do is just shield and not be too aggressive. Yeah. So we got first down and uh, 10 from the 14-yard line. Bell River again is in the I formation. Quarterback rolls out again, similar to play to what they ran two or three plays ago, where Domofsky's rolling right, immediately met by about three front neck defenders for no gain. They might want to put that one back in the back page. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had much luck with that one the first yeah. time they've run it. <coughs> I'd agree with you on that. They, they definitely have some weapons, and domofsky has got an incredible arm. Uh, so, you know. And the, but that wind's really blowing. Take a look at those goalposts, Greg, yeah. and look at the flag. This would be a tough field goal. Yeah, so, as close as they are. Yeah, it'll be interesting if they even try one, one in that circumstance. So here we go. We got second and 10 from the 14-yard line. I formation. Quarterback short drop. Looking around. Not surprising. He's looking for his favorite receiver, number 87, Mateo. Yeah, so we had a, sh yeah, we had a short drop, slight roll left, and he's looking around, and he tried it for Mateo. About a, ran like about a seven-yard hook in the middle of the field. Decent pass breakup. So now I think are we? Yes, we're going to see a field goal attempt. This should be interesting. And it's Mateo, Mateo Trifon. This will be a 21-yard field goal. Okay. Snap. Good hold. Oh, wide, wide left, and um, front neck falls on it on the end zone. So that'll be a single point for Bell River, and uh, they'll take a one nothing lead. So I don't know if you were watching any of yesterday's games, but uh, the Huron Heights. Laurier game came down to the last play of the game, and that was one on a rouge. In that case, it was a punt into the end zone that was returned, and the, the runner was just tackled about a few inches short of the goal line. Yeah, I, I was not here, but I heard all about it. It was the talk of a lot of the coaches when I came in today, and uh, they were also comparing it to the uh, Laval University of Montreal, uh, you know, in the Q final. Oh, you know what? It was exactly the same. That runner was tackled just shy yeah. of the goal line, too. So here we go. We got first and ten. Front neck taking over on the 35-yard line. 
Hand off to number 25 who runs left. He's got already got a first nice. down, picking up about 25, 30 yards. That is Ryder Rogerson. Well blocked on that side. Got him to the outside, and receivers did a good job of screening, as you said yeah. earlier, and uh, he found the seam. Again, every time I want to say Frontenac, I'm almost going to say Ottawa because, again, they look exactly <laughs> like the Gigi's. So, anyway, we got Frontenac with a first down on the Bell River 53-yard line. Quarterback the shotgun, handoff to, again, the same running back. Rogerson, he's immediately tackled after a two-yard gain by number 17, Adam Pisani. Nice, nice play off the edge there. They left him unblocked, and he took advantage of it. Okay, so here we go. We got second and seven. Again, quarterbacks, well, we actually got a pistol formation. Quarterback five yards deep with a running back directly behind him. This will be an interesting call. Did the offensive lineman get drawn off because of the defensive end jumping off sides? Or you can tell these are young players because they haven't, they haven't mastered the pointing at the right. other side of the line. Right, they just stand, they're standing there looking <laughs> at each other instead of pointing. Right, if this was college or the pros. No, they did call it on the offensive okay. tackle. So, yeah, we got a five-yard penalty on the offense. It's going to bring up second and 13. Pistol formation again. Backs in motion, so we got six receivers out in the pattern. Good cut. Quarterback scrambling. Oh, he's almost brought down by Mateo Trifon. Nice. Gets the ball, completes it downfield to the 40-yard line at number 84. He picks up the first down. Good reception by uh, Jake Plater. Bell River did a great job initially of taking away what he wanted to th throw, and he scrambled around, kept his eyes down the field, and found a receiver. Yeah, it was good composure by the quarterback there. He didn't have initially what he was looking for, but he managed to keep his eyes downfield, scramble a little bit, and make the throw. First down for Frontenac on Bell River's 38-yard line, first and 10. Well, oh. that, that receiver's down, yeah. So it was a short short uh, screen pass to the wide receiver out on the left there, number 33, and he caught it with a knee on the ground, so he is down where he caught it. It's unfortunate here. It looked like they had a little something going as far as had it set up pretty well. Yeah, the DB, the nearest DB is about 11 yards yeah, off the ball. Had he been able to not go down, he probably would have picked up the first down. And one of the old linemen was coming around the corner, so. My pet peeve is when you throw that play and then the receiver cuts it inside, right? right? Like just... Beat one guy to the outside, and then you might score. Yeah. So here we go. We got second and 12. He actually lost a couple of yards on that reception. Second and 12 from the 40-yard line. Okay. Throw deep down the middle. Oh. Ball was well overthrown. Uh, the pass was intended for number 84, Jake Plater. Well covered by number 14, Liam Havinga. That'll be something to keep an eye on for later in the game. Front neck was in a 4 by one formation, and... They actually had numbers to their advantage. See if they come back to it later in the game. So let's see. The last time you noted that their punter was at about 10 yards. This time he's at about 12 and a half. He's, yeah, so, he's, so he's listening to you a little bit. See how much he steps up. Yeah. Not bad. He was at 10 that time. Tries so. to angle it a bit towards the sideline. Oh, it oh. bounces over the returner's head at the five-yard line. And it bounces out of the side of the end zone. So that is going to be a single point for Frontenac. Punt bounces into the left side of the end zone. That is a rouge, and we have a tie game. Yeah, when I was home for the uh, American Thanksgiving and we had the uh, Mar annual Marshall Turkey Bowl game, okay. uh, I tried to sneak in the rouge, but the uh, – they weren't going for it with the American rules. So. <laughs> <laughs> the average American must just shake their head when, they, when you try to explain to them, especially the fact that you can be rewarded for missing a field goal. Yes, yes. Yeah. They, they don't quite get that one. 
And I actually heard this morning that the Rouge rule might be changed a little bit next year in the CFL. Did you hear about this? I have not heard that. Okay, well, we'll get to that. We'll get that in a few minutes. And it's not a joke either. Okay, so here we go. Domovsky's under center. uh, First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Was in the eye, but he's dropped back in the shotgun with a running back on either side of him. Quick handoff to number three. They ran this play a little earlier, except this time it's stuffed almost at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a year, uh, a yard, sorry. So, so far they have favored definitely running to their right. Yes. Uh, this first quarter. Yeah, and you know what? There's only about 12 seconds left in the quarter, so I think in the second second quarter we're going to see um, – them open it up a little bit more. Interesting timeout by Frontenac. I think the strategy here is hoping to stop them again on second down and force them to punt into the wind. Yeah, very good. If they can pull it off here, it's a very good strategy to make them pick, kick one more time into the wind and oh, you know, get better field position out of it. The key here will be stopping them here on second and ten, but I like the call. So what I heard this morning, and one of the CIS coaches was talking about this is, and how the CFL might change the Rouge rule, is that on long on field goals that are wide that go out of the end zone and don't touch the ground, that that might not get awarded a single point. Okay. Whereas a field goal that's wide, maybe a longer field goal that where the right. guy takes a knee, okay, that that will still be a single point. So basically what they're saying is the uh, defending team has to have an opportunity to return the ball yeah, exactly. If, it, if they don't have an opportunity to return the ball, then it, no single would be awarded. That what, would be an interesting. What do you think about that? Uh, I'd have to think about that one a little bit. It would put more pressure on the field goal kicker, that's for sure. Yeah. Have to make it or, you know, take a little something off of it so it doesn't go through the back of the end. Zone. Yeah. So, yeah, it would be interesting. Right. I, I could see the premise of, you know, the defending team should have the opportunity to, you know, r- run the ball out or return the kick. So. Right. Might, it might be something worth looking at. I've never minded the punt, the rouge on the punt. Right. But I've always hated the, the rouge on the missed field goal. Well, you know, what would happen then maybe at the end of the game? <laughs> now instead of trying that 30-yard field goal or 28-yard field goal, you just put your punter out there and yeah. tell him to hammer it. Yeah. So, you know, whether it uh, – I'm not sure what the intent of the rule is, but it'll be – you know, at the end of the game, it just might change the strategy for the coaches as far as what they decide to do who – who, who they asked to kick to, you know, ensure that they get that single. Now, as a coach, have you ever won or lost a game on the last play of a game due to a single? Uh, let me think. No, not the last play, but, okay. you know, within the last 25 seconds or okay. something like that. Uh, probably the worst one ever. Mm-hmm was when I was coaching in Edmonton. Okay. We lost in the last 30 seconds on the – we scored to actually go ahead by one <coughs> with 30 seconds left in the game. Yeah. Went for two just to try to get up three in yeah. case they got an opportunity to kick the field goal. Right. Unfortunately, our quarterback threw an interception, and they ran it back all the way and got the two points. Oh, oh my we God. Were, now we were down one. <laughs> So oh boy, that's probably, that's probably the worst one. And oh, then the geez. worst part about it is now we still had to kick off. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're on the <laughs> air. I'm glad you did that, not me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that one, sports fans. Anyway, okay, it's uh, the second down and nine. <laughs> moving on, moving along. I think the FCC is going to be calling pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. Fake oh, hand, fake oh. handoff to the slot yeah, back coming around, nice and Demoski keeps it himself. He's already right. got the first down, and he's still rolling um, for about 25, almost a 30-yard run. Yeah. Good misdirection. Well, that negates the uh, strategy that Frontenac was trying to employ of forcing the punt into the wind. Yeah, but you know, what? I still like that timeout. I, I did too. You know, because you know they had him in a second and nine, yeah. and you know. Punting with versus against the win is going to make a huge difference. So, you know, the strategy didn't work, but that doesn't mean it was a bad strategy. No, not at all. I like the call. I think there was a rouge or a game that was lost many years ago in the OUA where uh, Mac was returning a ball out of the end zone. They returned it for a touchdown, but there was a clip in the end zone. Yes. And, okay, yeah. Yes. You're... Okay, so we got uh, Bell River with a first down on their own. 49-yard, or sorry, on the 51-yard line of Frontenac. Short handoff, no gain. 
quickly tackled by three Frontenac defenders, yeah, including well. number 63, Brandon Hay, an excellent two-way lineman. A lot of, lot of teams have been talking to, a lot of OUA teams have been talking to. So that brings us to the end of the quarter with a very bizarre football score, 1-1. We, uh, we will come back to you in about 30 seconds. Take a little commercial break. Okay, we are back. It is second and 11, Bell River on Frontenac's 50-yard line. Domofsky in sh shotgun formation, fake handoff, rolls a bit to the right, a lot of pressure, and he's going to get sacked by about two players. One of them is number 59, Brian Cowton. He's had a good ball game to this point in time. He's been in on several plays already. Yeah, you know, when I was in Kingston a few weeks ago scouting, uh, he was a player that definitely stood out. Okay. You know, he was making plays all over the place. Uh, not a huge linebacker, but very active and very aggressive. So they lost about seven yards on that. So now they're going to be punting with the wind. And again, we see Mr. Mateo Trifon come out. And these returners are definitely respecting the leg, Greg. Look how deep they are. Uh, yeah. Yes, they are. We got the returners Returners on the five-yard line. One's almost on the three. They're 50-something uh, yards deep here. That might be a little too much respect. No, Decent pump, but it's going to be fielded around the 20-yard yeah, line. 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 He comes up, a little bit of bobble, oh. and it's fumbled. Oh. Okay, number 33, Sam Stymist. Had a little trouble getting a grip on the ball, but eventually fell on it, and they're going to take over on the 22-yard line. It's too bad he had a little room there to go, I, th I think, as well. Yeah. He fielded that cleanly. He did a good job coming up and trying to field it in the air. Just didn't get it clean. Yeah, and those returners were back far. I know if I had a nickel for every time I told one of my high school returners, move up, we're not in the NFL here. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, they'd see these guys punt 50 yards. They think it's going to happen at this level. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We got first and 10 on the 23-yard line. Direct snap to the quarterback, and he takes it himself up the middle. About a four or five yard run. That's Jet Zakruski. Frontenac was trying to spread him out there, run a little quarterback draw, lead play. They were in an empty set. Bell River did a good job defending it. So we got second and five at the 28 yard line. Again, front neck in a pistol formation. Running backs in motion. Nice job. And we got a quick hitter to the uh, number 33 out on left. He, receiver just ran about a seven or eight yard hook. Catches the ball. Sam Stymus, and they pick up first down. Well designed play by front neck there. They just sent all five receivers down, and everybody hooked up at the first down markers. And Quarterback picked out the open guy and hit him. Yeah, when that cornerback's lined up 10 yards or more off the ball, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, that should be an automatic even, like, check down if uh, that wasn't even the intended receiver at the start of the play. So here we go. We got a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Quick handoff up the middle. And he's tackled by two defenders, number three and number... Well, he's one of these guys that pulls his jersey up so far, you can't even see what number he is. <laughs> Wait for he turns around, maybe we can see 65, the back. 65, that's what he needed. So Lucas Brown yeah. filled up the, the gap in the middle of the field there. So it's only a short gain of about two yards. The officials on the sideline are having a hard time keeping the down marker from not blowing to an incorrect down. So they're working hard down there. We got second and eight. Deep pass, corner route, and again, nice, uh, nice try there by Jet Zakruski. But again, he's throwing into a very, very yeah. stiff wind. He had him, but I think the wind definitely was a factor there. Yeah. Uh, I like what Frontenac's doing on offense. They're uh, 
showing a bunch of different sets, trying to get a feel for how the Bell River defense might adjust to them, and it'll be interesting to see as the game goes on if they find a couple of formations that they like and stick with them. One thing that might be interesting is both these teams have rolled all season long. I mean, a couple of them had close games, but, yeah. you know, exiting a quarter with only a point is something neither team would be used to. Yeah. Wow, that Ooh. punt went up into the air, and the wind just killed it, and uh, it maybe went about six yards. Yeah, and the uh, interesting enough, Frontenac lined up with two onside players, and the one guy, he actually outran the kick, so... Uh, <laughs> It kind of defeated the strategy, but I do like the uh, thought process again by the front net coaching staff. Yeah. I mean, all he had to do was kick the sticks, right? Yeah. He kick. Just, and then we had to find the ball. No, he wouldn't. You know, 12-yard punt would have worked it, but the problem is only went about five or six yards. Yeah. I was surprised the refs didn't even blow the whistle immediately because right. it went up straight and the wind hung it up, and sometimes they'll just blow it quickly for safety purposes. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that called a lot, particularly in the high school level. Yeah. And they're calling no yards on that. So, Greg, I don't know if you're aware of this. There were certain uh, certain different uh, rules that were happening in different regions here in Guelph. Uh, they didn't have kickoffs this year other than at the start of each half. Really? And I wonder what you think about that. Well, I know it's kind of a safety th issue that people are looking at, but – you know, I think it eliminates the uh, opportunity when you have a really skilled player uh, to get him a chance to get the ball in space. So I don't, really have, I don't think I'm really an advocate for, for that rule. No, neither am I. So first and 10, uh, LaSalle, Domofsky rolls left. He overshoots his receiver. It's going to be accepting in second and 10. Yeah, you know what? My opinion on that is at the high school level, I don't think you see kill shots on KR right. too much, right? You, you definitely see that in the pros. You see right. it in, in uh, youth sports. And maybe you can make a stronger argument for removing it from those levels. Right. Uh, but the amount of times I've seen a kid take a hard shot on KR in high school, you could count on one hand. And, and you know, and at the high school level, you know, obviously the strategy is as the return team, hey, we're putting our best athlete back there. Right. It's an opportunity for him to make a big play for us to help us win the game. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think you're, you know, penalizing the kids there yeah absolutely uh, and you know when they come to a game like this if you haven't been doing kickoffs all year you're gonna yeah the, win, which uh <laughs> you know is, might be an issue so it's second and ten we got a deep pass down the left sideline oh that was just a pure one-on-one -on -one for uh, mateo trifon they they went a 14 formation one one receiver to the field four to the boundary and it was just an iso to mateo threw it up and the wind kind of Played havoc with it just off his fingertips. Yeah, decent coverage by number seven, Devontae Delenga, too. Not uh, bad. You know, he was def definitely uh, was outmatched in terms of height, but he, he got in there and helped break he, it up. Big challenge, but yeah. he handled it well. Yeah. I'm sure that's something that uh, we'll probably see again. So here we go. Uh, uh, Bell River's on the 36-yard line. Okay. That's it looks like they're going to try a 42-yard field goal. Okay. Which right off the bat is telling me they only got a six-yard snap instead of seven. Correct. Um, so perhaps they didn't want to make it a 43-yarder. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they know his range exactly. Yeah, maybe. You don't see many 42-yard field goal attempts in high school. So no. This could be interesting. No, you do not. But that was the first thing I noticed. And, again, there's still – he's clearly going to do this with a six-yard yeah. snap. And uh, that's certainly going to make it easier to block. And Frontenac has some decent-sized interior D linemen. So if they get any penetration, this could be a, a potential block. Or the other big deal is, you know, because it's a long field goal, if he doesn't make it, uh, you know, possibility of a big return here for Frontenac. Yeah. So, again, for those of you out there that uh, don't know, Greg Marshall is the current head coach at the University of Toronto. Greg, how many years have you been there now? Uh, four seasons, five, you know, five years because of the, missing the COVID. Sure. I started in 2018, and, uh, yeah, it's been and, good. And Greg's modest. He's really done a good job helping turn the program around uh, with some uh, really good assistance on staff as well. So here we go with the field goal attempt. Yeah. Might have it, the length. No, it's going to be wide left. Fielded about 15 yards deep in the end zone. And he is 
tackled right at the goal. Oh. No, they got him short of the goal line. They got him. They got him short of the goal line. Maybe it was very similar to the uh, end of the Huron Heights game yesterday, except that was up the middle. This was more towards the, the sideline. The interesting part about this, when you look at the replay, is Frontenac had a nice return set up yeah. to, the, to the boundary, but the returner went to the field. Right. So he went away from his blocking and didn't didn't make it out of the end zone. So. And number two, like number five down there, Bra uh, Cooper Brasso, was in better position, but number two, Dayton Canto came from out of nowhere Amazing. to actually make the tackle. Yeah, he Maybe. really hustled on that one. Oh, oh they get, they said he got out. Okay. The refs have decided that he made the goal line. Did they go back to instant replay, or I, how did I, they come up? With I that? don't know. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, Coach. What did you? Do? I don't think he got out, but I was. You know, well, hold I, on. Here we go. Oh, it's very close. Yeah, you know what? It's close enough that you can't really fault yeah. him. So no point there. It's first and 10 from the 20. The interesting call on that is, though, that the official that was right there on the spot yeah. was the one signaling single. Yes. So I'm not sure who overruled him. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing, especially as a head coach at the, at the U Sports level, you must annoy you when the receiver who's in the, or the official who's in the best position to make the call gets overruled by another official yeah if so it doesn't go in your favor <laughs> sometimes myself and murray Drinkwalder will have a conversation about that on the monday <laughs> after the game <laughs> yeah okay here we go so we had about a three yard pickup there it's going to bring up second and seven jet sakruski in the pistol again fake handoff now he's rolling right nice get some pressure there in the backfield he's still rolling right Manages to get rid of the ball, but that was more out for self-preservation and avoiding the sack. There was really good pressure there by oh. number uh, nine. Was that no, Mateo? Eight, that was Mateo yeah. Treffin again, but unfortunately, Mateo is going to get called for uh, roughing the passer after the play. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, well, that's, that's... No, actually, it wasn't him. Somebody else came in there late and hit him out he, of bounds. He, he slapped him on the shoulder. No, it was the second guy. <laughs> okay. Was oh, okay. It was not him. Okay, because if they threw it on Mateo, that would have been a really bad he call. He was actually made a smart play. Yeah. So that gives Frontenac a very cheap first down. Big play, though, because they would have had to have been punting from their own 20 yep. into the wind. So, yep. again, no. costly penalty for Bell River. Let's uh, front net, keep the ball, keep the clock running. So first and 10 from their own 38-yard line, handoff to the left, and he's got the edge. There's number 25. He's picked up, geez, about 25 yards. That's Good the, run. That's the same play they had success with earlier in the first quarter, and uh, they went back to it. Yeah, right. Uh, Ryder, nice job by the receivers there blocking as well. Ryder Rogerson's had a good game so far. That's at least two long runs he's yeah. picked up there. Left side of the old line sealed the edge, and receivers did a good job getting on the DBs. So, Coach, in a situation where the other team's got a dominant player like Mateo Trifon on the D-line, would your strategy more be to run at him or run away from him? Well, if we're going to run at him, we're going to make sure you got some help on him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you can have some success running away from him, we'll do that as much as anything. Yeah. So we had a short handoff there, picked up about three yards, but we had a very quick flag. That's usually – where the, especially where that flag came from, probably a hold. Yeah, I think it's a holding in the interior here. Oh. Well, I hope it's not on number 66 because he just buried his guy. He did this. Oh, wow. What's that, objectionable conduct? That's uh, No, that is unnecessary roughness. Oh, okay. Unnecessary roughness. It's an odd call. Unnecessary roughness. On a okay. short running play up the middle. I hope it's not for burying that guy because that was a great block. We need to see the replay on that. Okay, here's the replay, Coach. I don't know if that's the – I don't know where the call is. Yeah, if they did call it on 63, that would be a shame. That was just yeah. a good block. Yeah, I'm not sure what the call was. So that's going to bring up second and very long. Oh, wow. Thanks, Coach. Be two to one. So it is second and 21. 10 yard penalty, second down. 
Plus it was a post play penalty, so it's really costly. Well, second and 20. Not many plays that uh, you've been working on in practice that get second and 20. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where you had a very second and long and you just did a quick kick? Uh, no, but I've seen other teams deploy it. Yeah. And quarterback's back to pass. He's immediately met by a very strong mm -hmm. pass rush, and he is sacked about one yard short of the line of scrimmage by number seven team Adam Pisani. We've called his name a few times today. Yeah. Again, Bell River secondary is doing a nice job in coverage, taking away the quarterback's first looks. And it's good reaction by uh, Pisani because he was actually initially in coverage, and right. then once he saw the scramble, he came up there and made the tackle about one yard shy of the line of scrimmage. They had a couple of deep patterns uh, called, but he didn't have time to uh, sit in the pocket and wait for it to develop. Yeah, I don't know how many deep passes you're going to be completing into this uh, no. wind. So here we go. Let's see if they can have a little bit more lock punt in the ball here. Much better kick. And it bounces around the 40-yard line. It's quickly fielded by number two, and he gets about a five-yard return. That's Dayton Canto. Interesting enough, uh, Frontenac didn't go to the onside kick formation on that one. But, yeah. uh, you know, they did a good job, kick, much better kick, and covered it pretty well. Have you ever seen a 1-1 score in a game? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Figure y'all, your experience in the CFL, there was never a 1-1? No, not too many 1-1 one, one games. Okay. So we have Bell River taking over, first and 10 from their own 46-yard line. Damoski in the shotgun, three receivers split to each side. Okay, a little empty formation. Let's see if they put the ball in the air. Okay, double screens. And uh, pass attempt for number three, Braden Canto is incomplete. That might have had a chance, but, uh, you know, there was, I think even if he catches that at best, he's only going to get a couple of yards on that. Yeah, Frontenac had it covered down pretty good. Second and ten. Damoski in the shotgun. Got a running back to his right. He's rolling right. Three receivers on that side of the field. He's scrambling. He's gonna, oh, he picks up the first down. He was hit about a yard short, but he managed to drive the defender backwards and pick up the first down by about two yards, but it's coming back because of a hold. Hey, Who would they call a holding on here? I don't know. Let's watch the replay here. Maybe. Uh, I guess right there. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 59. Yeah. Brian Cowton's getting dragged the back of his jersey. He was in pursuit of the quarterback. He had a good angle on the quarterback. I think he would have got him if that holding hadn't occurred. Yeah. No, good call by the refs. So front, front next got to do a little bit better job on uh, keeping contain on the quarterback, though. He's hurt him a couple times now with his legs. Yeah, you know, initially in that first quarter, he ran a couple of those short, you know, quarterback runs. And right. He didn't look especially strong on the run, but the but when he's been scrambling, he's actually looked quite impressive. Yeah. So now it brings up instead of a first down, we got a second and twenty. Domoski in the shotgun, three receivers to each side of the field, empty backfield. Wide receiver screen at number fourteen, and he picks up about ten or eleven yards. You got about half of it back, so. Yeah, and again, Coach, a lot of times if you're in second and 20, would you say it's fair to say that, you know, maybe your goal is to just get 10 yards yeah, instead you, of picking up the first down? You're looking to make a positive play, and then, you know, if we get a break and get it close and want to go on third, we can. If not, you know, we help out our field position after the punt. So uh, particularly the fact that they're with their wind at the back, you know? Yeah. Uh oh. And that's the refs with the three-minute warning there. Okay, now we see Bell River going to punt formation and putting a couple guys on side. Two so. guys on side to the left, yes. So. And, again, the returners are 10, 20, 30, 40. They're about 45 yards back. Right. So if, if uh, Mateo can kick this ball maybe about 20 yards, um, 
There's a nice punt. Actually, kicks it deep. Oh, kicks Three it hammers about it over 45 yards, and the receiver kind of drops it, and it rolls deep in the end zone where the receiver falls on it. Yep. This time, that's a rouge. So that goes down as a 65-yard punt. Or, or, Coach, when it goes into the end zone, do those yards count on yes. the length of the punt? Yes. Okay, so that's going to go down then as about an 80-yard punt because that ends up about 15 yards deep in the end yeah. zone. My argument on this is that the uh, it shouldn't count the end zone part of it. Yeah. Or the net, the net punt average, you know, really, because they get the ball out to the 35. Right. Okay, so. Or maybe even, too, that it, it was kind of fumbled at the 15. Right. Should those extra yards count with the punt. Anyway, bottom line is it's a single point, and Bell River is now up 2-1 in this hockey, sorry, in this football game. Yeah, and shots on goal are about <laughs> even. First and ten for Frontenac at the 35-yard line. Okay. Zakruski, so quick uh, pass to the right. Sam Stymist catches the ball for about a seven-yard gain, bring up second and three. I think they they like to isolate Sam on the backside there. They've done that a couple times and thrown the ball out to him and looking to hopefully make a bra uh, you know break a tackle one time. And I think into the win, that's what you want to do. You want yeah. short passes. You want to the short side of the field. You want to make it you know, a little more plausible that you're actually going to have success. Second and four. Okay. Quarterback design run. It was supposed to go to the left, but he cut it back up the middle, yeah. and he actually picked up about 10 yards first down. Nice job. He had three lead blockers going around the left-hand side, and he just said, to hell with that, I'm going up the middle. I think Bell River defenders overreacted as they saw all those blockers take off, and he saw an opening and he just took it, so. Nice job. So that brings up first down at Frontenac's own 51-yard line with 2 minutes and 25 seconds left and counting in the half. Okay. Hand off to Ryder, nice. Ryder Rogerson. Nice tackle there by number 14. That's Liam Havinga. Nice tackle after about a 2-yard game. Both of those guys have had good games so far on each side of the ball. He came down from his safety position there and made a very nice play. Yeah. And, again, when you're talking about a safety, I mean, their ability to come up and fill the run is just as important as their ability in pass coverage, would you say? Yes, especially on a day like today. Yeah. You know, when you know the other team's trying to use some clock, run the ball here against the wind. So, right. big play here before the half. Can they keep them? The ball away from Bell River. Second and eight. Lined up heavy left. This was the play they, were, they had lined up a minute ago, and yeah. this time he decides to follow his blockers and go left. Only gets about three yards before he's brought down well short of the first down. Again, number 17, Adam Anapasani on the tackle. So, okay, you got, Coach, you got a minute and 47 here. You got third and five. Midfield, what would you be doing here? Well, first of all, I think if I was Bell River, I would have used a timeout. Okay. Okay, so the clock doesn't burn down. Yep. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Frontenac <laughs> does a little bit of a hard count here, try to draw them off sides. Yeah, I think that's that would be a smart move. But So we got third and five. Here we go. Oh, they're going for it. Direct snap to the quarterback in the gut, in the uh, pistol. Nice. Hand off to Roger Rogers, Ryder Rogerson, and he's tackled. Well short of the first down. Needed five yards, only got about three. Nice job again. Secondary guys filled up here nice from uh, Bell River because initially it looked like he had a chance. Yeah. And number seven came from his corner position, Carter Den <coughs> Denemy, and uh, really did a nice job. So pro probably the wind entered into that decision too, right, Coach? I think so. I think so. They were trying to keep control, but the challenge now is they gave him pretty good field position here. Yeah. And uh, Bell River is going to have a chance to, you know, with – the, them showing they try a 42-yard field goal, they don't have far to go here to get into range. Yeah, so Bell River takes over a minute and 20 seconds left, right around their own 50. Domofsky, deep pass to number 14, and it's overthrown. We had good coverage there by number 5, uh, Dante Brown for uh, Frontenac. The challenge for the deep throws, you know, even when you have the wind now, you put it up there and the wind's going to take it. So it's hard to, you know, be real accurate on some of these deep throws. Yeah. 
Again, and when you look at some of the totals these teams have put up in their games, like Frontenac scored 56, 28, 56, 41, 37. Like, they're not used to only having a point. And right. Bell River, same thing, some very nice uh, games where they put a lot of points on the board, and now yeah. they, you know, they're sitting there with two. But that's what happens when you play another high-quality team. Yeah. It becomes a match of you know, defense wins championships. Oh, quick handoff to the fullback up the middle. He breaks a tackle, and he struggles ahead for about 9 or 10 yards. It'll be interesting to see where they mark this. Yeah, I think it's going to be third and one or third and less than one, so I'm sure they're definitely going to go for it. Yeah, certainly short, short by about almost a full yard. It's the old left foot, right foot spot. Which uh, one was it? Well, I remember when we, when uh, we, you know, at, when Laurier played U of T this year, there was a there was a spot in the fourth quarter that was oh, quite, yeah. quite interesting. I think we got definitely the uh, <laughs> double feet uh, spot on that one because there was no way we made that one. No, no. We were quite happy to get the call. <laughs> and on third and short, they run the sneak, and uh, Domovsky picks up about two yards, easily gets the first down, and now it is. Uh, 53 seconds left in the half. They have first and 10 on the front and act. Again, I keep wanting to say Ottawa. The front, the front and act 47 yard line. And now the clock starts running. Again, the last three minutes, clock stops after each play. But on a running play, once the ball is set by the official, he blows it in. And so we have 45 seconds and counting. First and 10, Bell River. Here's the one by four formation again. Now let's see if they're going to. Oh, high snap. High snap. He bobbles it, and now he's just running for his life. And he's got the corner. Domovsky showing some speed. And he get not only does he get the first down, he gets out of bounds, which is huge. That was a great play on his part because that was falling <laughs> apart right from the beginning with the high snap. Yep, he made chicken salad out of something else related to chicken That's there. That's right. And uh, see, I didn't do it twice. That something you said earlier. There's something I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so he picked up 11 yards. <laughs> And now uh, it is uh, 28.9 seconds left. I love the accuracy there. And we have a first down on the 37-yard line. Yeah, they, well, they're in field goal range. Yeah. They've shown that they were not afraid to try it. So yeah. I'm sure they're looking for more, but they're definitely in field goal range. We've got the eye formation again here. And lead, you know, oh, lead block by number nice. three, number two. He Canto, Canto cuts back. Oh, great block. And a great block by the receiver downfield. Dylan Dayton Canto with a 37-yard touchdown run. Again, that. eye formation, just followed the block of the fullback, got in open space, and then made the rest happen himself. Old-fashioned lead play. Nice lead block by number three. And then great job getting into the secondary and making people miss. So, number three, Braden Canto. I, I think it's fair to assume he's he the brother be. of yeah. Dayton Canto. Big run. First really big play of the game. And the convert attempt is good. That is a you know, that's a backbreaker there for Frontenac. Yeah. 2-1. With 20 sec something seconds left, and now to give up a touchdown, particularly you know one of some length, that's a tough tough way to end the half. Yeah, yeah. So we got nine to one, and there are basically 19 seconds left in the half. Yeah. They may look back and say, you know, we might have been better off punting there on third down at midfield. I don't know. but Well, you, you know, know what? Well, 2020 to hindsight, right? I'm trying to remember, which was the team that had the punt into the wind that only went about seven or eight yards? Was that, it them? Yeah. They've had two punts into the wind. The one went about six. The one went about 25. Yeah. So, so you're right. It wasn't going to make a huge difference possibly, but, you know, they came up a little short on third down and yeah. comes back to haunt them. Now the key is not to give up a single or anything here on the kickoff because that's definitely a possibility with the wind blowing the way it is. Oh, absolutely. Trifon with the long kick. And he drives Right it. down the middle. Okay, the receiver caught it about five yards deep in the end zone. Nice job. Which you don't say very much at the high school level. No. And he returns it out to the 25-yard line. He's tackled by number 27, Gavin Harris. He did a nice job of navigating the ball. You know, around the goalpost and the 
upright there, so that was good. Good job by the return man. And it was a smart play by the, uh, the Trifon kicking it off, trying to drive it between the two yeah, returners. Yeah, definitely. Nine seconds left, nine and a half seconds left. If you're Frontenac, you're on your 20-yard line, you're just taking a knee here, right? I would think I would just be, you know, trying to get to the half before any more damage happens. Yeah. And that appears to be what they're going to do. Yes, I think this is the first time their quarterback's been under center, and he just takes a knee. The unfortunate part for Frontenac, I'm not sure who won, whose choice it was at the beginning of the game, but you know now if it's their choice to start the second half, you know do they take the ball and probably have to go against the wind to start the second half, or do they take the end and you know try to play for having the ball and the and the wind in the fourth quarter? Yeah, so. well that'll definitely be part of the story of the game in the second half. So again, we got a halftime score of nine to one in favor of Bell River, two quality teams. And, uh, again, this is Dave Morrissey and Greg Marshall. And we'll be uh, talking to you again shortly at the start of the second half. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories how you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students like my parents and coaches did for me. 
I still look up to them. And I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I do. That's why I coach. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching, and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things for my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. 
you put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I do. That's why I coach. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching, and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level.
Okay, welcome back to the second half of the Eastern Bowl. Dave Morrissey here with Greg Marshall. It is uh, nine to one for uh, Bell River over Frontenac. And uh, Greg, what do you think about uh, the choice to uh, that was made by Frontenac here in the second half? Well, you know, obviously uh, this is a huge quarter for them. They're going to have the ball and the win to start, and uh, you know they've got to put some points on the board here and you know put some pressure on bell river in the fourth quarter so i would say that you know frontenac's got to get at least you know 10 to 14 points in this quarter to have a realistic chance in the fourth quarter because it'll be tough to you know if they're not winning or uh you know down multiple scores going into the fourth quarter going in against the wind will be very difficult yeah we had a, si a similar situation in our in a regular season game near the end of the year against guelph and uh we uh, were going with the wind in the third quarter, did nothing, and it wasn't until the fourth quarter against the wind that we exploded. So okay. but I think you're right. Frontenac has probably really got to do it in this third quarter. Here. You know, and Frontenac being a more of a pass team than a th run team, this is their opportunity to take advantage of the wind. Okay, here we go with the kick. The nice. tail kicks it down to about the – bounces at the 20. Nice placement of the ball, though, Fielded too. cleanly. Returner busts a couple of tackles. And he's still going up at around the 42-yard line. That looked like number 33, Sam Stimus. Sam's had a very good game. He's uh, made some plays in the return game, caught a couple passes, and does a nice job here, you know, getting the ball out to the 40-yard line to start the second half. Yeah, it looks like we, we definitely have a little bit of light snow falling now. It's the kind that melts as soon as it hits the ground, but that combined with very strong winds. You know, passing's still going to be a little bit difficult, even with the wind. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge, no yep. doubt. Okay, so we got first and 10 on their own 41-yard line again, pistol formation. Three split right, two left. Receiver screen to the right-hand side of the field. Number 10's got, oh, he's got, oh. he's got the edge. Jordan Buick. Haven't called his name yet today, Jordan Buick, but uh, he took that uh, receiver screen and got all the way down to the 25-yard line. Yeah, the, the corner there for Bell River made a mistake. They came in on the block. He took the inside, and the receiver cut to the outside, and away he went. I saw Buick play a few weeks ago in Kingston. Very good receiver, and what really impressed me was his blocking abilities too. So we got first and 10 on the 25-yard line. That's exactly what Frontenac needed to start this half. Quarterback goes under center. That was an interesting call. It was almost like they were running quarterback sneak. Yeah, I mean, he was, first he, and he ten. was lined up in the gun again and then quickly goes under center. Uh, quick snap to pick up about two yards, which, yeah, might have been a good call in second and one. But anyway. Trying to catch him off guard and didn't really work. No, so we got second and seven from the 22-yard line. Again, pistol formation like they've been in almost every play so, uh, play so far. Quarterback's looking left. Hits the receiver about seven yards downfield. Needed to get a couple yards to get the first down, which he did. And that is number 81, Liam Kincaid. First time today calling his name. Again, front neck went to five receiver set, spread them out. Everybody ran to the sticks and... Hooked up, and the quarterback found the open guy. First and 10 from about the 13-yard line. Oh, nice. Hand off to Rogerson. Busts a couple of tackles. He's still going. Wrestled down at the five-yard line. So Rogerson picked up about seven or eight yards there. Going to bring up second and short. That was a nice run. He got hit in the backfield. Could have been a, you know, loss of yards, and he turns it into an eight-yard gain. So. Yep. Okay, well, quarterback in the, in the gun goes up under center like he did a couple of plays ago where right. we were saying good call for second and short, and they use it here, and I think he gets it. I think he did too. It's spotted on the three-yard line. It's the old right foot, left foot spot here. We'll yeah. see what they got. I remember a high school game, Greg, where on a key – uh, measurement on third and inches uh, instead of bringing the sticks out to the ball the ref picked up the ball and brought it to the sticks 
I'm sure you were coaching, you would have been happy about that. Well, it was in our favor. So okay. I, initially, when I saw what he was doing, I, I, there was some screaming going on, but yeah. it, the, the, the screaming subsided after a while. Especially when he zigged to the right <laughs> direction. Yes. Well, just short, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have third and inches here. I mean, this is an automatic. They're going for it. Should be. You get the clean exchange on the snap, and they should be fine. Okay, we've taken out a receiver and put in an extra lineman here. Yep. Okay, so here we go. Third and inches just outside the three-yard line. Quarterback starts in the gun, you know, all pistol formation technically. Now he's walking up the center. Probably going to be another sneak. Bell River may be offside here. They get, it looks a little tight in there. We'll see. And it is a quarterback sneak. <laughs> I believe he's got it. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, he Definitely may, got it. The question he, is, he is, he, the is he in the end zone? I think they're going to spot him just short. Refs haven't signaled anything yet. No. I mean, it's quite I, obvious it's a first down. I think they. But no, they're moving it to the one yard yeah. line. This will probably be another sneak no here. Well. Yeah. And then the key decision for uh, Frontenac, if they do score, will, will they go for two? Yeah. That'll be interesting to see. And it is another sneak. Oh, initially, it's stuffed. But that's a quick flag, and I think you probably got to say the defense is lined up offside. I believe they are offsides. And, again, I'm not sure at the university level, Greg, but at the high school level, the refs will always yell, move back, move back, move back. Do you get that consideration in, in the U sports level? Yes, they do. Uh, uh, you know, and the key on the one-yard line is the defensive line uh, and linebackers, even as stand-up guys, their hand or foot can't be across the goal line. Right. So it's first down again, but you do not move the ball forward even half a yard. It goes back right to the one-yard line. So it really doesn't cost you very much in terms of that penalty. We see another sneak, and I don't think he's in. I don't think he is either. I think he got Let's about see. halfway there. But, again, the interesting thing is they'll bring the ball back to the one. Right? They don't leave it on the half-yard line. Correct. Yeah, looking at the replay, I think he's... He looked like he hit down about the half-yard yeah. line. Okay, so... Second and one. Might want to try going to his left. He's gone to his right every time. Yeah. Not had much, particularly with the, there's a stand-up guy to the left. The other guys are all down in the three yep. points. Oh, there you go. Oh, hey, hey coach, <laughs> they heard you. <laughs> That's multiple decades of, of experience, <laughs> knowledge, and wisdom coming at you there. And he took uh, coach's advice and went, veered to the left there and literally just walked in. Looks so like now there's some discussion of whether they're going to go for one or two. The kicker's out there with the T. Yeah, the quarterback's still there, so I think they are going to go for two. No, they're going to go for the one. So I don't. I guess maybe the thinking is there's still a ton of time left in this yeah, game. Keep the single in play still. Yeah. Uh, so snap is good. Good decision. Kick's good. So it's 9-8, and again, Frontenac started that quarter exactly what they needed to do. You know, they got the win in the third quarter. It was all about we need to score quick because we got the ball too, and they did exactly that. That was a huge drive, and as you said, that coming out of the locker room, that's exactly what they needed. Now the key for Bell River is can they answer, even if it's just to get a couple of first downs to drain some time off the clock, against the wind. Now I'm going to alert our viewers very shortly. Coach Marshall is going to have to leave. He's got a very important call uh, with the hot, with a university administrator. Uh, we may see him again later, but if not, uh, we have a special guest joining us in the booth. It is not the other Greg Marshall. Now that, would be, <laughs> now that would be something if yeah. we could follow up one Greg Marshall with another, but uh, no. So uh, if I don't get a chance to in the next few minutes, I'd like to thank Coach Marshall for joining me here today. Uh, it's been great having him here with me. Thanks, Dave. It's been fun, and hopefully I'll make it back here before the end of the game. Well, I think we'd be setting broadcasting history for someone to leave the booth and come <laughs> back. So a couple years ago I did this with Jack Moore, who was uh, one of our long snappers, and we, yeah. we did long snapping trivia for about 10 minutes. There you go. That was broadcasting history. Okay, there here's is. the kickoff. 
It's uh, kicked deep to the 15-yard line. Fielded cleanly by Liam Havinga. Breaks a couple of tackles. Still oh. going. Oh. Eventually dragged down at the 32-yard line. I liked about that kickoff, I noticed that number 25 uh, for Kingston, Ryder Rogerson, who's played well on offense, he was one of the first guys down on the kick, taking on the wedge and busting things up and kind of destroyed that return. So it's good to see guys that contribute in multiple ways. Exactly. So here we go, first and uh, 10 on about the 31-yard line for Bell River. Quick handoff. Okay. And that is uh, Canto, again, kind of similar to the play they ran that got the touchdown near the end of the uh, first half. Exactly what they needed. Good good run play. Canto uh, picks up 12 yards in the first down. Probably as a coach, you'd probably want him to get nine and a half there so that you could drain a little bit more off, but you won't get greedy and he'll take the play. Uh, Again, Domofsky, one of the most highly sought-after quarterbacks in the province. Lines up under center. we got eye formation. First and 10 on the 43-yard line. Inside to the fullback. Oh, he just about popped that. Quick handoff to the fullback up the middle. Yeah, and if he just would have broke that one tackle, he might have uh, got uh, many yards. That was Braden Canto. Got to love that brother combo in the backfield. He's done a nice job as the lead blocker most of the game, but when they have handed him the ball, he's been very effective. Yeah. So we got second and six here. Again, Bell River going into the wind, certainly limiting their offensive options. Hand off to the oh. slot back coming around the no. end, and he's oh. hammered by number 31, causing a fumble. That was Cameron Owen, who's actually listed. It says DH. I know that's defensive ha halfback, but you could call him the designated hitter after that hit. Huge hit coming around the end and recovered by number 72, Thomas Nitschke. Now, there's a football name. Yeah. Coach Marshall here is old enough to actually oh, know, know that name. The Silver Surfer, Ray Nitschke. Jeez, I didn't even know that was a nickname. <laughs> but, yeah, Ray Nitschke, NFL legend. That was a great hit and uh, form, formed him up, tackling and put the helmet right in there, knocked the ball out. And is that the ball carry that's still down on the ground? It might be. It wouldn't be a surprise because no. he was he was hitting very hard. Uh, if Frontenac can take advantage of this opportunity, then it's definitely momentum will have swung big time. Yeah. Because it looked like Bell River had a play going there, and uh, you know, until the young man came up and made a nice hit. Yeah, you know, fake hand out to the left, and the slot back came around, took it directly from the quarterback, and he had, you know, he looked like he had some room, but the, yeah. you know, 31, Cameron Owen just came up and probably the hit of the game. It was certainly in terms of causing the turnover. It's an enormous momentum changer and. Again, especially with Frontenac still having the wind to get the ball again in really good field position and is enormous. You know, until this point in time, it's been a pretty clean game as far as turnovers go. But, you know, in the second half, as the wind's picking up and the snow's coming down, we may see a few more of those. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, and that's something that isn't said enough, you know, or that point isn't made enough. That it's really cold out there. And uh, just to be able to hold on to the ball, yep. to be able to catch the ball, to be able to throw the ball is really difficult. And you got to give these players – you know, props for being able to do that. Now, particularly if you're a player that only handles it once or twice, you know, only gets a couple opportunities to handle it. You're not used to it. It, it makes it even more difficult. Right. Now, I know, Greg, uh, when you were in the CFL uh, playing D-line, um, did you ever have a chance to uh, return a fumble and take it the distance, or a very long distance? I actually had three in my career. Okay. Yeah. And how long were they, though? 
The longest was 55, and oh. it almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 55. Yeah. Okay, so none of the, not, you didn't recover it on the one and didn't just roll no. in the – Okay, because no. that'd be cheap. Okay. No, I – Okay. I, yeah, I think the shortest was probably about uh, 15 or 20, and okay. the longest was 55. Okay, so, so you, you had earned, to work a little bit. You earned all three. Yeah, I had okay. to work a little bit. Okay, that's so, good. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, that young man's getting up. That's a really good that's sign. Good to see. Yeah. And, uh,. Okay, so the injured player is now walking off the field, and it's good to see uh, he was able to get up on his own power. It is now Frontenac taking over the ball with first and 10 on the opponent's 43-yard line, and they're trying a deep pass. And it is caught. Jet Sikruski, great pass downfield, caught by number 33, Sam Stymist. Again. Okay, we're now welcome in the booth by uh, Laurier assistant coach Christian Curiata. Thank you for joining us here today, Christian. Absolutely. It's a little bit warmer up here, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's why I thought you'd like to come up. Yeah. So now it's first and 10 for Frontenac from the 15 yard line. Handoff to Ryder Rogerson. He gets down to about the 7 yard line going to bring up about second and three. Now while Coach Curiata is getting his feet wet, I'll just introduce him to the audience here. Uh, he's a young man at Laurier University who joined our coaching staff this year. He's been a great addition to our staff coaching defense and uh, you know we're really glad to have him and he volunteered to help out in the booth here today. So thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate the kind of words, Dave. Well, sometimes I actually utter those. <laughs> okay, so here we go. It's second and three. And uh, it's a keeper. And he scored. He, I think he scored. Jet Sikruski calls his own number from the five-yard line and gets in the end zone. And the momentum has really shifted here with two front-to-back touchdowns. I'll tell you what, Dave. They came out of this half much, much stronger and much more confident. Some I'd like to see from front-to-back this half. Yep. Well, and then again, that hit on that uh, on that. Uh, on that play on that uh, that uh, they they stuffed recently, that was that was huge. That was a momentum changer. And we're going for the convert here. Snaps good, kicks up and good. And again, a nine-one lead for Bell River has disappeared, and it is now fifteen to nine for Frontenac. So, what do you think uh, is going to be the key here for uh, Christian in terms of um, what? Uh, Bell River is going to do on offense here. Uh, you know, I don't think the game plan is going to change too much. They had some success in the first half. Really, what the first half came down to, two stout defenses. Yep. Not a lot of movement, obviously. You know, they got that late score to go up 9-1. Um, but I don't think they really need to change too much. Just keep the game going. Obviously, we're getting some snowy conditions on the field now. But, uh, you know, the run game was really the primary thing they were at attacking with anyways. Yeah, and you know what, I think they kind of just need to weather this, you know, pardon the pun, but weather the storm in this quarter um, because they do get the wind in the fourth and you have one of the best quarterbacks in the province. Uh, so if they can even just not fall behind by more, they probably take it at this point. But they really need a drive consuming some clock uh, at a minimum on this next possession. Absolutely, just over four minutes. If they can get out of this quarter, get the wind behind them, um, that's going to be a big part, okay, big so part the of their next drive. Kickoff drives the returner back to the 10-yard line, breaks a couple of tackles, and he's brought down at the 25-yard line. That is, again, uh, Liam Havinga, who's had a pretty good game for the Bell River Nobles. I'm not exactly sure what a noble is. I was wondering that myself. Well, anyway, if we'd prepped properly, we probably would have had the answer to that, but, you know, we were thrown in here at the last minute, so... Uh, there's always Google, right? Always Google. There's always Google. So here we go. It's first and ten 
for Bell River on the 25-yard line. Starts off in the eye formation. He backs up in the shotgun. Back split. And direct handoff to number three who goes around the right end. That's Canto. And he's hit and tackled after about a five-yard gain. You know, Dave, I, I, I'll be curious to see here if they uh, – if they move their big man, Mateo Trafon, into the backfield with all this lead stuff they're doing, um, you know, he's obviously a very key blocker for them. So I wonder what the conditions, if they're going to go more towards that run game and move him back there. That's interesting. So now it's second and five. I formation again. Quick handoff to the fullback, and that doesn't fool anyone in that case. Uh, three men on the tackle, including number 59, Brian Cowton, who's uh, had an exceptional game to this point. A great play by 59. Good eyes. Just staying patient. And when he sees it, he attacks downhill. Yeah. So that is exactly what uh, Bell River did not want to do, have a two-and-out situation. You know, at least picking up a couple of first downs might have been big, but, you know, they only get five yards. They have to punt into the wind. Um, Mateo's got a strong leg. We, we need to see everything he's got here. Low driving punt fielded at the 43-yard line. And Frontenac returns it <coughs> just across midfield to the Bell River 53-yard line, bringing up a first down. You know, it's interesting. When we saw that one punt earlier on in the game where it just kind of went straight up in the air, Yeah. Um, you know, I think what, what they needed to do in that case is exactly what Mateo did there. Just line drive it, keep it low, make it so the wind can't affect it too, too much. And, and, and obviously, you know, they got a pretty good feel, a flip of the field on that one. Yeah. Okay, so... Frontenac, I was saying before, I keep wanting to say Ottawa because they look like the GGs. Frontenac takes over the ball at the 53-yard line. Pistol formation, running back in motion. Quarterback tries a quick out to the left-hand side of the field. Pass falls incomplete. No, 2.44 left. It's going to be interesting to see how Frontenac keeps coming out, you know, whether this drive gets to continue or even if they get the ball one more time this, this quarter. Um, you know, how much they try and keep working that pass game with the wind. Yeah, you know what, I think if I'm them, I'm going to attack as much as I can. I'm going to use my pass game as much as I can because your ability to do that in the fourth quarter is going to certainly be lessened. Again, we got pistol formation, four receivers to the right, single receiver to the top of the field. And the quarterback scrambling, and he's brought down. Brought down by number 95. I think that's 95. It's tough to tell about that jersey there. 65, Lucas Brown. Thank you. Lucas Brown, <laughs> <laughs> Guys in the other booth helping out a little bit. God bless you. 65, Lucas Brown. And that's exactly what Bell River needed. Getting the ball back pretty quickly. This time a little less time to kill on a, on a drive into the wind uh, yeah. to get to the fourth quarter. So hopefully a couple run plays for them. They could get moving. Well, front to back punter bobbles the ball, and he decides to run with it because it would have been blocked for sure. Only gets a few yards before he's tackled. And again, that could be a momentum changer. The snap was good. He just had a hard time getting a handle on it. Bobbles it a few times. Drops it. And then he's tackled by number seven, Carter Denomi. You know, some I thought uh, Bell River's done all, really well all day is rallying to the ball. Um, guys at all levels are just coming and attacking. You know, even if he got by that guy, he, there, there was many guys coming. He wasn't going to make it to the first down marker. Yeah, and once he bobbled that ball a couple of times, he had no choice. He had to run with it. And uh, I think the guy that made the tackle is the man that's still down. Well, we have a break here. You know, Dave, some I thought that's really interesting, you know, being here the last three days is, is seeing all the different types of run games we've been getting. Yeah. Um, I think there's been so many unique things. You know, obviously you see a team like Huron who obviously, you know, runs the ball much, much more than they pass it. Yeah. Um, you know, they do some unique things in their run game. Um, but from every team, we've seen some some different little, you know, little wrinkles in their run game. And I just think it's been really interesting to see. You know, we, we got 18 teams in this tournament, obviously one more game today. Um and, and, and just the, the individualized run games have been really interesting to see to me. And, you, you know, in this kind of weather, when it gets cold, you have to, right? I mean, if your run game isn't strong, when it's windy, when it's rainy, when it's snowy, now we're getting to the point where the snow is kind of sticking to the field a little bit. If you don't have a running game, you're in a lot of trouble. 
Okay, so Bell River taking over. First and 10 from the Frontenac 45-yard line. Minute and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Quick hitter to that fullback again who, oh, busts a tackle. Got in the open, but again, there's Brian Cowton again making a huge hit, turning what could have been a long gain into only about a three-yarder. That box for Frontenac is loaded. They knew that run's coming. They're, they're getting in that eye form on a, you know, obviously going into the wind. They're expecting a run game. They're loading that box and doing a good job coming downhill. Well. So we haven't called uh, Mateo Trifon's name much lately in terms of the passing game. They got him split out wide right here. So maybe we see him uh, as a focus here. Nope, we got a pitch left. And that is stuffed immediately. He fumbled it. It's picked up by a lineman. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. That's every lineman's dream right there. That Dave. is. I can just picture Zach Scotto with the ball doing that. Quinn Grant picked up the fumble and advanced the ball about four or five yards. Almost got a first down. I'll tell you what, he was able to find his lane there on the edge. Actually, he picked up about seven or eight. Had he just fallen on it, they would have had about a third and ten. But now they have a third and three. Normally you tell the guy just to fall on it, but he did a good job, and they're going for it. Can't, can't argue with this decision given... A punt into the wind wouldn't be too too easy. They go with the sneak on third and three, and they get it. That's a surprising call. Quarterback sneak on third and three. Hey, they trust their guy. Yeah. He's, done, he's done a really good job running today, and, and, and like you said earlier, you know, he's, he's one of the best quarterbacks in this province. You know, I got to watch him a lot this summer, and, uh, you know, he, d he can deliver the ball all over the place with his arm, but, you know, he, he's been doing a great job with his legs today. Yeah, so Domofsky plays for the Essex Ravens in the uh, Summer League, and um, Coach Curiata here is with the Cambridge Lions. He's had a chance to scout him numerous times. Yeah, he did, he did a bit of a number on us, I, I will admit to that. But, uh, yeah, getting to watch his film, you know, he, he is a special player. He's a great, great passer and um, obviously a very good athlete as well. Yeah, he certainly, you know, has the eye of a lot of OUA teams. Okay, so here we go. It is first and ten. Bell River on the Frontenac 33-yard line. And they're trailing 15-9, start of the fourth quarter. Handoff up the middle. That's to Canto. I can easily say that since both the running backs have the same last name. I can't go wrong. <laughs> Short gain. So some, you know, some interest in there. We, we're kind of seeing a formation change. Obviously, you know, uh, with Bell River going into the wind, we're seeing a lot of that 22 split, and then we get the, uh, you know, the I form. So now we're seeing a little bit more from them. Um, you know, they're going back to it here, but saw a little bit of 14, 41 earlier in the game when they're in with the wind. So yeah, we got a little bit of a pitch. Oh, and that's st stuffed immediately, tackled by Cowton. Fumble. Ball's on the ground. Recovered by Frontenac, but there was a very early flag. Now I'm curious to see if this goes against the offense or the defense here. It looks like both jumps. So I'm going to be interested to see how they rule this. Watching the replay. Yeah, that left slot, number 17, he, he's, he's past the ball there. So I'm curious, but we did see some movement, obviously, yeah, from 42, the front. Yeah, 42 front. definitely was was early. The refs have not signaled yet. We have a player down on the field, which is maybe giving them more time to make their decision. <coughs> there still has not been a signal. These injuries are starting to pile up a little bit for Bell River. Hopefully, uh, you know, some of these guys come back into the game. Okay, they just, sig they just signaled again. It was uh, um, on the offense, so that is going to be a fumble. And Frontenac takes over. I tell you, Brian Cowton has had an incredible game so far. Yeah, he's been impressive to watch. I, I'm really liking his movement in the box. And like I said before, his, his eyes into the backfield have been really good. It's putting him in the right place. Yeah, when I was in Kingston scouting a few weeks ago, he was definitely the player that caught my eye the most. Uh, there was, you know, Kingston is a great place for football. I saw four teams, and uh, there must have been a dozen or 15 exceptional players, strong teams. Uh, but he was, he was the one that stood out the most for me. 
Yeah, both these, you know, both these areas, obviously Bell River being kind of in the Windsor area, and then and then you get Fron Knack being up in the Kingston area. Those are those are two pretty strong communities for football. Um, you know, those along with you know the the Londons and the Hamiltons yeah. are really big centers for football in the Those, in the those are your top area. four. Those are th without a doubt. Those are the top four. Three is well, three got up. He's walking off the field very slowly, but I think he'll be back. Okay, the refs, you can move those sticks now since it's changed the possession. <laughs> Come on, guys. Now, what do you think the Frontenac strategy is here? Into the wind, 11 minutes left, you got a six point lead. What do you I go know with? What? Ryder Rogerson's had a good game running the ball. So I, I think I'd be riding Ryder um, for a while here now to try and, you know, not just, not just move the ball, but eat clock. Or at least if I'm passing, I want my quarterback rolling out so at least he's got a run option. And they do hand off to Ryder Rogerson. Off tackle running play off the left side. And again, first down, picks up eight yards. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. I'll tell you what, that, that, that O line did an exceptional job there getting to the second level, getting those gaps open. Ryder's just reading it out and, and find that hole. I mean, it, it, he's got a big gap there. He's just got to get vertical, which he does, and, and, and pick up a good game about eight yards. Yeah, and one of those offensive linemen, by the way, is Brian Cowton, um, which, again, he's undersized for that position, uh, but he contributes on both sides of the ball. He was a big part of that play as well. We got second and short, and it's another quarterback sneak. And, again, he's still going after about four or five yards. Jet Zakruski picks up the first down. So, again, this is what I was saying before. They just want to eat clock. You got a six-point lead. Run the ball, eat the clock. Even at this point, early in the quarter, I'd I'd be all trying to take off as much time as I can, you know, using all 20 seconds before every play, shorten the game. Yeah, and front a, a huddle team, so you know, as soon as this is blown in, like they're they're eating some clock up anyways. They're going to take at least 10 seconds just to snap the ball off the clock. But uh, yeah, when they're th if they just keep going with this run game, you know, every couple downs they're 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 getting a new set. So. Um, just keep, like you said, Ryan Ryder. Yeah. So there's some sort of referee timeout here. Not exactly sure what it's about. Spider-Man hasn't visited. Um, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. They've whistled it in. It is first and ten for Frontenac on their own 53-yard line. Handoff, off tackle again to Ryder Rogerson. This is the same play they just ran. Breaks some tackles. Picks up five yards. Another good game for Ryder. That, that's all you really need from, from your back in this situation. Just keep getting the good gains. Uh, make them all positive runs. Take the clock down. Uh, he's doing a good job of just managing this game right now. Yeah, we don't have the benefit of having statistics in front of us, but it feels like he's got to have at least 80 yards today, maybe even closing on 100. I know he had at least two running plays of about 25 or 30 yards each. Okay, so we got the heavy formation coming here. A receiver came off the field, and they've added an extra offensive lineman. So for second and four, especially on – they've run these sneaks on second and three, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see another one on second and four. Yeah, quarterback keeper kind of off the left tackle, breaks the tackle. He's picked up the first down. He got about six yards, kind of went back to four, but I think they're going to give him four progress. Yeah, it's interesting that the, uh, the, the, ju the judge on our sideline here has given him a little bit of a short. Well, I think, I think uh, Bell River's a little bit lucky they didn't get called for a horse collar. Oh, I agree. I, I was thinking that live there. Oh, look at this. is interesting. So when he ran that ball, he clearly advanced at about six yards, but he cut back, and he ended up short of the first down. So this is going to be third and one. Now, it's interesting. Like, I, I, I thought that was a stop of forward progress. You could argue that he was kind of moved back one and a half, too. Yeah, that's an interesting situation there. So third and one, probably here comes the sneak. Here comes the sneak, and he's got it. Yeah, but getting back to that last play, I thought he had the forward progress, and he was kind of moved back those two yards. Uh, so it was an interesting spot. Now, it's not going to come back to haunt him, but could have. Well, I mean, looking at the replay of it, he was clearly, I would say, a good one and a half, two yards ahead of the, the first down mark. Yeah. I mean, he's gotten back to that, that last spot here. Um, 
But it, yeah, it is interesting that they, they ruled that he went back kind of on his own, own volition. Yeah, so clock's still running. Frontenac first down. Seven minutes and 44 seconds left. First and 10 on the 46-yard line. Quarterback under center. One running back deep in the backfield. Hand off to Ryder Rogerson again. They really like running to the left-hand side. I think the majority of their runs have been to that side of the field. Uh, fans are going nuts because they didn't like the block number 81 made on the uh, left side of the field. Let's watch the replay and see why the fans are so upset. Uh, we kind of lose them there. Yeah, it's a little out of frame. It's kind of hard to tell, but, yeah, the crowd here but is going. you know going. what? I mean, receivers are allowed to block. So the way the angle he was coming up, it couldn't have been a hit from behind. So I'm not sure why, but I don't know. It could have been just the uh, less Bell River fans getting finding something to get angry about. But anyway, looks like that's Rogerson going off the field. Yep. So this could be a very significant injury. Man, he's walking off the field. And uh, new running backs coming in. It's going to be about a second and five. I wonder how much more the uh, the quarterback gets involved, obviously, in the second and five. We've seen the sneak in the second and three, but, you know, in this situation, I don't think you can risk that, that, that box being loaded the way it has been. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if they kind of try and do something a little, you know, a little more unique with him yeah. in, in the run game now that they don't have Ryder in. So we got number 42, Jace Bos Bosart. Let's see if they give him the ball. Quarterback's under center again. Looks okay. He's run, He's keeping it and running left again. They've had success with this. And again, he busts it. Easily picks up the first down. Needed five. Got about 15. <clears throat> he's been doing a great job of finding his gap. I mean, it's that left side of the line is just dominating. And even some of the receivers there really helping out in the blocking. Uh, when you're creating a den like that, it, it, it becomes easy for whether it be the quarterback, running back, doesn't matter. Whoever's running that, that ball, the, 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 the Bell River front has to do a little bit better job of, of making sure they're not getting a dent, dented yeah. as hard from those receivers especially. And I think uh, the Bell River coach has had about enough because he's called, called timeout going on in the field. And again, it's important to note that in this fourth quarter, Bell River has the win. But Frontenac is just bleeding this clock. Oh, they're doing a great job managing this quarter. Great job managing this quarter. Right, that and the turnover has really prevented, you know, Bell River from showcasing their best weapon, which is Domofsky's arm. So we're in a timeout here, and Frontenac's going to have a first and 10 on the 25-yard line. Even a field goal would be enormous. Uh, because with a six-point lean, that would put him up two scores. But I don't know how close you'd have to get to even try a field goal. Like, look at the uh, look at the wind. Look at the flags on the goalposts. The goalposts are shaking. I, mean, I, I can't imagine they try a field goal even more than 20 yards. Yeah, no, I think as long as there's no negative plays, I would say that the, probably the thing they're going to do is go for it on third yeah, down if they get into that situation. Right. Okay, so here we go. 6.49 left in the fourth quarter. It is first and 10 on the 24-yard line. Quarterback's under center. Again, he keeps it again, just takes it straight ahead. Very safe play. Very vanilla. Picks up about three yards. Yeah, so like I said, you know, after Ryder went out, you know, the, they're just trusting the quarterback to run this ball. You know, they're keeping going with the sneak. They're creating the dent enough, and, and, and he's doing a really great job of finding his gap. Uh, looks like Rogerson's coming back in. And he sprinted on that field, so he looks, if he was hurt before, he looks fine now. So we got a second and seven. Again, they've really been favoring that left side, if, even if it's Rogerson or the quarterback. Oh, fumbles the snap. That could That's anybody's ball at this point. It looked like that was going to be another run to the left. Bell River believes they got it. And the referees have signaled that. So that's huge. That's enormous. That's what Bell River needed. Now, I'll tell you what, even with six minutes left, it, it, you know, even, even if Bell River scores, Kinsa, or, uh, uh, Frontenac's not out of it. Uh, just against the wind, you know, if they have to make a late drive where they're probably going to have to throw the ball, it's going to be tough. So we need to see a big stand from the Frontenac defense right now. Yeah, well, especially in Canadian football. I mean, when you get in those last three minutes, that can be an eternity. So let's see what we get from Bell River here. They, they obviously got some versatility with the pass and run game coming out in a quad set. So, you know, maybe we're getting a little bit of pass, kind of backed up in their own red zone here. Yep. So first and 10 from about the 20, their own 21-yard line. 
And he's rolling left. He's got three receivers over there. Finds Trifon. We've been talking about he's been overdue to catch the ball. Catches the ball and he's pushing a the pile. There's about eight guys trying to tackle him right now. And they end up with a 24-yard gain. You know, he's another one of those Essex Ravens, uh, you know, played with Domofsky in the summer. And, and that combination in the summer is just as deadly as, as you can see it right on that play. Um, you know, you say, you say Domofsky's arm's their biggest weapon. And while I agree with you, Mateo's, Mateo's up there in the argument. Oh, absolutely. And that was a really good catch. I mean, the, the DB got a hand in there. And uh, after he caught the ball again, the yards after the catch are very impressive. He was down on the ground for a minute, but he got back up. Just under five minutes left in the game. It's first and ten from their own 44-yard line. We now have four wide receivers split to the right-hand side of the field this time, a wide side of the field. And Domofsky's rolling right. And he breaks the tackle. Good block by the wide receiver at the edge. Domofsky picks up about nine yards. Now that was uh, uh, Brian Cowden chasing him down again, uh, chasing him out of there. Uh, looked like a design rollout anyways, but, but he was right on his tail, giving him some pressure. Yeah, so it's basically what I think was exactly the same play except to the other side of the field. And now we got second and one. Again, they're going to – only one running back in the backfield. Quarterback, quarterback sneak, but he fumbled the ball similar to what happened to Frontenac. He fumbled it, then he took a knee. They had a quick whistle, but there's also a flag. That's a late flag. That's after anything here is going to be after the play. I That's believe. a very late flag. And considering it's a legal motion, that would be the exact type of penalty that wouldn't have a late flag. Huh. <laughs> Given that that's something that happens before <laughs> the play, for it to happen after the play, you know, anyway. Yeah, it'd be interesting bless. to see what number that was on. I didn't, I didn't really see too much there. but you know, Maybe a receiver was over the line of scrimmage? That must have been it. That probably had to be it. There probably was a receiver left early. Anyway, instead of second and one, it's second and six. A little over four minutes remaining. We're back in the I formation with the Canto combination in the backfield. He drops back to pass. And he takes the ball and decides to run with it. Man, he's tough. He busts up the middle. Needed six yards. Got ten. First down on the Frontenac 51-yard line. Yeah, this kid is impressive, man. He, he he doesn't have his option. He's looking for Mateo there. Mateo's covered up, obviously. You know, defense doing a good job of locking him up. You don't want him getting the ball in his hands. And then Nick just makes a play. Well, this is going to be the game this this drive because you know even if they're in, with with the clock kick kick, kick uh, ticking down, uh, they might already be in three down territory. First and ten from the fifty one yard line. And shotgun, fake handoff. Domofsky's running again, and he's tackled for about a one-yard loss. <coughs> he has thrown down hard. He has taken some hits today, but yes, he just yes. keeps getting back up. Yep. I mean, he doesn't have, let's say, the uh, you know electric speed or anything like that, but he's tough. He's, he's fast enough. He's, he's broken tackles. He's gotten to the edge, and he's not afraid to run up the middle, too. So we're at the three-minute warning, and it's, this is a huge play. It's second and 12 on Frontenac's 53-yard line. We got three wide receivers split wide right in a bunch formation. We got Mo Mateo Trifon isolated on the other side of the field. I think they could probably go in that direction, try and get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's exactly what they're doing, uh, but that one-on-one -on -one matchup quickly turned into triple coverage. And I think uh, Mateo wanted a flag there. It's a little bit back and forth, pretty physical. So you know, I don't, I don't know. I think ref keeping the flag in his pocket was probably the right decision on that. Yeah. One. Watching the replay here. Yeah, I mean, it was a little underthrown, and uh, I think it was the good decision by the refs not to throw the flag. Now this here brings up an interesting decision. Again, the last three minutes of the quarter, you know, there is stop. You know, the, the clock does run slowly. So punting the ball and playing field position, a lot of coaches would do that right now. So I think this is a somewhat controversial decision, third and 12, going for it. But here we go. A 
can't remember if they've used both their timeouts. Quarterback's flush from the pocket. He's still scrambling, and he is brought down. Maybe gets about a four-yard gain, but the pressure was immediate. He did not have time to set and go through his progressions. He just had to take it and run. Lots of Falcons in on that one. That, that, that's a really great stand by the front neck defense. Took away what they needed to. Uh, you know, linebackers rally and D-line creating good pressure. I, I do think, it, you know, that was probably a good decision to go for it there. Um, just based on how, you know, Frontenac's run game went on that last drive. Took so much time off the clock. Um, so, you know, I think with the wind and everything, all things considered, it was probably the right decision. Um, just needed something a little bit, you know, maybe easier to get there instead of the rollout yeah. pass with the pressure that that's coming from Frontenac. Right, because you're thinking they might not get the ball back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it might be. It might have just been a clock situation, like you said. Yeah. I'm not sure about the timeout usage. So, right. so here we go. Two thirty-five left, just shy of midfield. First and ten, and again running left again, the Frontenac Falcons, and that's Ryder Rogerson again with a gain of significant positive yardage about a nine yard rush there on first down I'll tell you what I'm, I'm impressed by this kid's toughness he you know he's gone down a couple times been out of the game fought back a couple times now and, and just keeps running the rock hard like he's he's putting it on the line for you know the last last couple minutes of this game potentially trying to seal this win and Jed Zakruski has been great on these keepers so second and one I think it's for sure he's taking it yeah there he goes up the middle only needed one yard and it's going to be close. I think he's got it, but it's going to be close. Refs were giving him a pretty generous spot at the start, but I believe he got it either way. Based on that, that's first down. Yeah, that's first down. Yeah. Okay, so two minutes and two seconds. Now, we've seen a lot of pressure today from Bell River, um, and I think, you know, right there what we got was, was a run to the right instead of their left. Um, maybe caught the Bell River defense offside a little bit there, but, um, you know, I think they're doing a really good job in this run game First right and now. ten, single back in the backfield, handoff to Rogerson, left again as always, and this time the, they tackle him almost immediately at the line of scrimmage, maybe a one-yard gain. That was number 70, Zach Delisle on the tackle. Yeah, Bell River is just loading that box. So, this 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 is kind of going to become the play of the game here. It is second and nine, and again, looking at the timeouts left, uh, Bell River only has one. I am interested to see if Frontenac doesn't really get much of a gain here. What's their choice? Because you know, punting they haven't had much success. Um, you know, are they going to trust, you know, going for it on third down or really taking that risk? Because, you know, really, what's the field position yeah, going to be that either win, way? Right? So I think, I think this is going to be three down territory unless they lose big yards on this play. Here we go, second and nine. Hand off to Rogerson to the left. How many times have I said that? That one's stuffed again. Maybe about a one-yard loss. So we're probably going to bring up third and ten. There's a minute and nine seconds left. If you're Bell River, you've got to use your timeout here. So we got decision time. Well, they called their timeout. So, yeah. So what do you do here, sports fans? That's, that's Dwayne Cameron's favorite expression. Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> uh, what do you do here, sports fans? It is uh, third and ten. You're on the 50-yard line. You could punt into a very strong wind or go for it. Coach, what would you do? Well, the, the key here, again, is, is punting into this strong wind. They haven't had success at Right, so whether you go for it on third down here or you punt it, the, the the overall change in field position probably won't be too too different. So I think you know you, you take you know, you take your chance here. You've had a very strong run game, obviously. You know on this drive specifically, Bell River's done a really good job of stuff in this run. Um, but I do think you know this is a situation where you, you could consider going for it and feel good about it. Well, looking over to the front and back sideline, it's it's the offense. It's gonna they're gonna be going for it. All right, play of the game here. Bell River gets this stop. They got a chance to go ahead with the wind. Yeah. They got a they got a big opportunity in front of them and if they get this stop. They have about a full minute left to do it if they stop them here. So here we go. Rogerson deep tailback, eight yards deep in the backfield, and they're handing it to him, running to the right for a change. Uh, short gain, four yards, nowhere near a first down, and we're going to have an exciting conclusion here with a minute and two seconds left. 
Bell River takes over the ball on their own 41-yard line. I'll tell you what, that Bell River defense did exactly what they needed to do. That's that's one of the biggest drives of this game for them, and I think you know they came out knowing the situation, knowing that they had to get that stop. And all three downs there, they played real tough, didn't get dented like you know the pass drive, and have given their offense an opportunity to do something good here. Right, so they're on their 42-yard line. They need a touchdown. Six points down, no timeouts remaining. But, again, the way the clock moves in the last three minutes of the quarter, uh, they have more time than some people might think. Here we go. First down. Short pass out to the running back in the flat. And he's immediately tackled after about a two- or three-yard gain. Uh, they better be ready to get right back on the line of scrimmage here because as soon as they set that ball, that clock's going to run again. And we're going to find out if they have a two-minute offense very quickly right now. So they went an empty set there, went bubble to both sides, yeah. um, and just didn't get the block they needed on that boundary side. And they just huddled. So I'm wondering if they've practiced uh, a two-minute drill because with the clock running in the last little bit here, you don't have time to huddle. Quarterback back in the shotgun, immediate pressure. He's scrambling, and he's brought down after about maybe a two-yard gain. A couple of defenders in there, in there on the tackle. Another great pressure by Brian Cowden. You know what? Pressure. He hasn't had a lot of time to throw today. Domofsky has had pressure the whole day. And so now the clock's running, 35 seconds and counting. Uh, they're in the huddle again, which is, again, maybe they haven't had to practice a no huddle because they've won so easily most of the year. But, you know, the clock's running. It's third down and nine. They're taking their time. Like 15 seconds has come off the clock here. Third and eight. Here we go. Domofsky looking downfield. He's looking downfield from a tail. It's triple coverage, and it's picked off at the 36-yard line by number 18, Colin Johnson. And, man, that is a big, big play. There is a flag in the backfield near where the quarterback is. Could it be roughing the passer? We're going to – now, the replay just showed the interception, but maybe we'll see another replay where we can see the backfield. It is roughing wow. the passer. So the game is not over. But I tell you, to me, I think the big – I know I've mentioned a couple of times, but the fact that they've huddled, they have not hurried, um, has really, you know, affected their ability to drive as far as they need to. They only got 13 seconds left. Now, we know here that, that there's going to be a double, if not a triple team on Mateo. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So they're on the – they're 47 yards from pay dirt. With 13 seconds left, you got time for maybe two plays now. Again, they got Mateo isolated up on the top of the field, and they just ran the exact same play they did. Who he ends up kind of running a skinny post, triple coverage, slightly overthrown. With seven seconds left, or 7.4 seconds left. I'll tell you what, you depending where you know how much time this next play takes, you might get two still here. Um, you're going to have to get a real good gain and get down quick. Because if that clock hits zeros while you still got, you know, before the play's dead, that's it. But if you, you know, if you get on the ground before that thing hits zero, you got one last play. I think I might try and run like a seven or eight yard out to the short side. Uh, and it also depends on how far can Domofsky throw the ball, right? But I think they'll probably, they'll probably go for it all right here with only seven seconds left. In the gun again, two backs in the backfield. I wonder if they're going to hang around for some extra pass protect. Yep, we got a seven-man protection scheme. He's looking for Mateo down near the 25-yard line. It's incomplete. Uh, 1.7 seconds left. 1.7 seconds left. And we got third down and field, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, we knew that's what was coming. You know, the shot to 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 Mateo there, and uh, the front neck defense knew it as well. And you know, they played. The DBs are playing well on him right now. Oh. DBs are playing really well on him right now. And so now you see, you know, you, you, it's really interesting the formation you're seeing from Frontenac. It's smart. I mean, you have three DBs, three, three DBs lined up over 30 yards off the ball. Another five players lined up at least 20 yards off the ball. I don't think anyone's getting behind them. Last play of the game here. Domofsky in the backfield. He's got time to throw here, uh, but his oh. arm is hit while he throws it. It's picked off at the 24-yard line, and that's the game. 
Wow, I'll tell you what, Frontenac came out of that second half ready to play. It looked like a totally different team from that first half, and, and they got the job done. I don't know what you know. I don't know what the conversations or the adjustments were at, at halftime, but whatever they were, they worked and, and they got they got the job done today. Yeah, and I think I think the the key story of the game was really the consistent, especially in the second half, was the consistent pass rush. I mean, Domowski really didn't have time to throw very often. He was uh, he had to scramble a lot of the times, and although he's a good scrambler, you know, they, they took away the deep plays, they took away the big gains, and other than maybe one or two. Um, you know, Frontenac really did a good job defensing one of the best quarterbacks in the province. Absolutely. You know, in the third quarter there, we were talking about, you know, for, uh, Bell River having to get out of that half, kind of run the ball. They were against the wind. And, you know, we, we both expected that in the fourth quarter, um, Bell River's going to get the ball and just be able to, you know, throw it all over the place with a, you know, big arm from Domofsky. But, uh, you know, Frontenac did a phenomenal job of managing their clock, taking taking that time all the way off with their run game, doing a great job in the run game with the with the O line and the backs and the quarterback especially, and uh, man, they just they just drained it on uh, on Bell River there. Okay, so again, the results of the 2022 Eastern Bowl: the Frontenac Falcons from Kingston, Ontario, 15, and Bell River. Uh, from Bell River, Ontario, uh, nine. Two very good teams. And again, I'd like to thank uh, Christian Kiriata and uh, Greg Marshall for assisting me in the booth today. If you're at home, we got one more game today. That is uh, Cora versus Hespler, and that'll be a great one. So again, have a wonderful afternoon. And that's it for now. Thank you. 